not working very well. So luckily they got one over here that they were able to open and help bring uh, some uh, cool air into the room. But uh, for right now, this thing just does not feel like it's running. The thermostat looks like it's set fairly right. Alright, so the thermostat is closed. I uh, couldn't hear it clicking, but it's sometimes hard to hear it inside here because the solenoid's usually on the roof. The roof, the roof is on fire. So anyhow, let's go upstairs and see what's going on up there. Da -da -da -da. So here it is. Nothing's happening. Coil don't feel warm. It's getting some power. Don't know if it's enough to make it run or not. Three phase. Let's see what we got going on over here on the side. That's never good when you see the uh, panel for the compressor popped off the top here. That's a little concerning. It appears that we're in a defrost. We uh, just verified that we've got power. This is uh, my small diagnostic bag, which is why I'm using my old meter there. Uh, I need to trade that thing out. I know why I quit using it now. I can feel it ticking. See if this thing's tracking or not. All right, so we look at the pressures here. Not looking very good. Looks uh, mighty low there. As you just noticed in the video there, the screen, uh, the unit is, the unit looks to be really low from what you're seeing. Let's look at the sight glass here. Not feeling a lot of airflow through that. Sight glass looks cool though. I don't know what refrigerants are running, but that really seems awfully low. Unless we got some problems here. Uh, it's coming back cold. Oh yeah, looks nice. Well, we're running PLE oil, so we're either running 404 or 134A. This charge is hot, so I mean we got obviously something in there. Just looks really low. That sight glass is probably just so empty that it's not showing up. They were so generous to run the wire there right over top of my valve so I can't get into it. I guess we could do it from this valve over here. I didn't see that. Let's do that real quick, see if we can pump it down. Make sure it pumps down. Just it's acting awfully very strange. Almost like uh, we've got a compressor issue. It's nearly impossible to get my wrench in there. There's just no room to turn. We're gonna go down there and check the refri or the uh, TXV, make sure what kind of refrigerant this is, add a little bit to it, see if the head starts going up, see if it starts flashing off. I, I have a feeling we're probably low and that we have a leak. So we came down to look and see. It really looks like that's probably where it's leaking at. You can see the oil. That's right there. And looking at this coil. There is like the R leak. You can see it's leaking in the coil. So between the dirt and the oil leak, looks like we're running on 404. So it looks like it's 404 and it looks like it's about time for a new cooler. A new evaporator and might as well replace the condenser. Um, we need to clean that coil too. So obviously this thing's got some issues. Uh, let's go ahead and kill it and see if we can uh, verify that it is leaking, which I think it's pretty obvious. But I want to make sure before I tell them it is. So I went ahead and shut it off, checked my pressures. We're only 10 pounds on the suction because that solenoid's stopping it from uh, equalizing. If I had my gauges up here instead of these probes, I'd be able to just drop it one side to the other. But I'm gonna go downstairs, see if that's enough to pick anything up. Detect three, baby. Ten pounds of pressure on this thing. Yeah, 
Okay, that's great. Yeah, let's go ahead and zero it out here. Look at that, just like a uh, heated diode. That is in manual mode. It's leaking pretty good there. And it looks like it's probably leaking over in here too. This thing needs replaced. There ain't nothing I can do about that. We've got one right there for sure. And if I thought that was the only one, I'd probably go ahead and maybe give it a shot and try to fix it. But I have a feeling that it's more than just there, especially with it all the way up there to the top. It, uh, it's time for a new one. It's pretty bad. That won't last very long. So we've got our handy dandy brush here, even got a new one. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing cleaned off. They want a price on uh, replacing this part and potentially the upper condenser unit. But you can see what kind of job that does. It does really well. So we'll get this thing cleaned off. Need to get a cap on that thing too. So what we're doing is we're actually using that water there to get that off of our brush. So once we get a good pile of this crap on our brush to get it off of here, that way we're not knocking it all over the place. Bring it into there. That's the first time I've done that, so that seems to work pretty good. Yeah. I hate doing too much because then I'll end up never wanting to replace it. And this thing is beyond needing it. It'll probably work better and it's worked in a long, long time. Alright, that's a lot better than what it was by far. And it only took less than probably a few minutes. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing back into place, get a cap on that. Let's get this thing charged up. Well, something don't sound very good on that one over there. So it sounds like a motor's going out. Yep, you got a motor going out. That looks like it's fairly newer, too. Lovely. Well, we'll get to that here in a second. Still got to walk a reach in cooler yet to do. All right, let's see what we got here. Thirsty little burger. Still going. Hear a little rattling out of that compressor. I don't think that's liquid. That's. I don't know. Thought maybe it was the uh, evaporator or the condenser fan, but maybe not. Even when we stop adding, which we ain't going crazy, crazy. It doesn't really get much quieter. That compressor's getting ready to go out next. That is a 2000 compressor. Head pressure's higher than Susie's too. It uh, looks like it's probably pretty dirty. Uh, look at that evaporator. I mean, we're warm down there. Let's put this into a pump down before we waste too much time more on this. Two and a half pounds, we're getting doggone close. I'm kind of curious if, uh, if we've lost valves because that don't sound real good. Maybe not, but it ain't, it ain't looking real promising. Let's see if it can pump down. It's going down. Yeah, that TXV I think has got some problems. Well, now that we've condensed everything into the receiver, Let's see how it acts now. Oh, that's fast. That uh, TXV really don't look good. We'll have to watch this for a little bit. 
It might just be because it's warm down there, but man, it really seems higher than normal. All right, so we just cleared the sight glass. We're gonna watch that for a while. But uh, we're running about 321 on the head and we're only probably about 75 degrees out, maybe 80 at the most. Three pounds, 10 ounces, he's thirsty. I would say this thing is pretty much about empty. And I don't think this is no small leak, so they think they're gonna get away with it for a little while, but I have a feeling that this is gonna be changed out rather quickly or they're gonna regret it and we'll be right back on overtime trying to get this thing going on. So uh, I'm gonna have to grab uh, a hose or a bucket and some water and force that condenser out because that thing is definitely dirty. Gotta pop that thing open yet. So now the motor's running. This was a freezer that had been converted into a uh, cooler. It, uh, it's either got capacitors bad or the motor's bad, and I have a feeling it's the motor. You can hear the noise out of it. Wow, I don't know if we need that many defrosts anymore. All right, so this thing is, like I said, used to be a freezer. Had three defrosts, it's being used as a cooler now. Set as long as 50 minutes. I don't think we need that anymore. So, um, drop that down to maybe about 20. Hell, I'll be generous and put it at 30 since it's got a termination switch on it. But with the heated defrost and running as a cooler now, you really don't need all that crap. So, anyhow, the motor stopped. It, uh, Definitely is warm. Pastor, I don't think that's it. Let's look here at this. Really don't have any front to back play at all. Up and down's pretty good. All right, let's stop and see what happens when we kick it out. Huh. Well, it makes me wonder if it's just capacitor possibly or if the windings are going out. All right, so checking out our capacitor here. And we're at 3.69, and this is rated for four, so we're gonna need a new motor. Go ahead and get that on there for him now, otherwise we're gonna be back at nighttime or something, or a Friday evening. Okay, we tend to use these for about everything. It's a uh, 90, 656 reversible 230 volt and we got a 120 volt one there we go it should uh, give it room to breathe amp draw is usually right at about the maximum but it works out fine every time i've used them get these not so off that kicks on a little better Going the right direction, even. Got a little bit of a wobble. So there's a speed difference there. All right, jump back over to this one here. We make sure it can still pump down. It apps at 31, so it's starting to drop, obviously. Let's see where. Make sure this thing can pump down okay before I take off and head downstairs. Uh, of course, I've got a clean that thing off. Head pressure is going up a little bit. It'll do a lot better once we get that condenser clean. <clears throat> and it's starting to go back down. So we should be fine. Those bearings in that compressor sound funny. Generally if it's overcharged, that head pressure will just keep on going and won't, uh, won't come back down. So we're good there. All right, let's get this thing pumped up and ready to go. 200 dollar jetpack. Oh yeah, it's not hardly coming through at all. Doing a little bit better on this side here. Yeah, it's got. Some Got some coming out. It's 
packed in there where everybody's blown it forwards right into the coil deeper and it doesn't come out with the crap. We got that one pretty good. Might as well get this one real quick, but I don't want to spend too much time because this ain't what we're called for. And you sometimes can spend more time on something and they don't like that. Or you'd actually reveal a lot more problems and they're like, well, wait a minute, you're milking us for what we got here. So just one of them things where you gotta know your customer and uh, judge for yourself on whether you should go deeper into it or not. All right, so we got that washed out and this one washed out. Side glass still full, sounds a little better, but that compressor still sounds pretty bad. So we're gonna go down and get that prep table real quick. It's probably low. We just recharged it not too long ago. I told them they need to just replace it. So we'll see what they end up doing. Look familiar? All right, so. Let's see, the motor door. True reaching cooler here, so. The evaporator, I believe, is what was leaking. We've told them a couple times, but. They haven't done anything with it yet. I don't know, it's been a while since I've messed with this one. Actually, I don't know if I ever have messed with it because I don't have any writing on it at all. Let's get this thing opened up here. It's always nice. Guess we don't need the relay there. That's kind of useful. Let's just bypass it. Well, that's a good way to get shocked. Holy crap. All right, so we've got us one of those flimsy taps here that have a tendency to leak. So let's go ahead and see if it's actually just low or what's going on. Loosen that up and we've got pressure. Let's see where we're at here. Let's see if we can get over to this. Let's see how many things we can plug into this. So we just worked on it not too long ago, less than a month ago. We'll go ahead and reduce it because they're in the middle of uh, dinner and lunch here. So uh, we can scan it after we're done for the leak. Right. But it's probably an evaporator. All right, normally I pull the whole amount out, but I went ahead and just weighed in six ounces. And we're running that ballpark, which is acting a little funny yet. I had them unplug it when I was up on the roof. We got a good size leak inside there. The leak is so bad, we gotta run it in uh, manual reset mode. But that way it doesn't look like nuts what we're getting in here. But when you get back over to here, kind of reset it outside of the cabinet, come back in. And even though it's so contaminated, it's there we go. It's down there in that bottom somewhere. Spray it, see if I'm Alright, I can't hardly really see in here, but I soaked everything in here. And it's really hard to see, but either way you can see that coil is pretty ate up. It's not the uh, suction line coming out of the coil. Actually right there it is. Let's see if I can get repositioned here. <sighs> yep. Thinking right on the end of that coil. That's all screwed up. So they're gonna need to buy a new coil or consider maybe going with a new unit. This one here's done had it. It uh, 
keeps going low like that, they're going to destroy the compressor, and they've already got some relays and stuff bad, so I don't know. We'll mark on the inside cover here where it's leaking at so the next guy doesn't waste a lot of time and kind of go from there. All right, looks like the walk-in cooler is getting back down to pretty quick. You can feel some good air out of that. Yep. That's a lot better than what it was. And this one here is doing pretty good too. If I can see that number. Yeah, and five degrees, that's probably not real accurate. But it's definitely not a freezer anymore. Yeah, that's got electric heaters, so. That's plastic from the ceiling that's acting up. So that uh, gets that one there going. Yeah, we're right at 30-ish arc, so we're good there. All right, so uh, we've got the walk-in cooler taken care of. We've got the condenser fan motor on the other cooler taken care of. The reach-in cooler done. Everything's set and ready to go. Everything's dropped in temperature. Uh, we're getting them a quote on replacing this. And uh, I think they're going to probably replace that reach-in from what I just was told. So... All right, guys, if you like the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we will catch you on the next one.